We good? All right. 603. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our May 23rd, 2023 uh, Parks and Recreation meeting. We've got a nice stacked agenda for discussion tonight, so I look forward to getting everyone's feedback. If you will, just uh, stand for the Invocation of Pledge of Allegiance, and I'll take care of that for us today. Gracious Heavenly Father, just thank you for this opportunity to come together and just uh, be able to come together as citizens to be able to help guide our thoughts and processes to be able to make Dorchester County uh, a great place to live. Uh, Lord, we just want to be able to provide for our families and be able to work with, with all of our industry partners and our community partners to be able to make Dorchester County, Berkeley County, Charleston County, our entire area just the best it can be. Uh, just ask that you guide our decisions, give us wisdom and discernment. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. All right, so our first item on the agenda this evening is the approval of minutes from the March 28th, 2023 meeting. If you guys will recall, uh, we had a light agenda for April, so we opted to cancel the April meeting. So we will be looking at meeting or minutes from March, and I will just need a motion to approve, deny, or amend as necessary. From a member, please. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. And a second. All right, any discussion? All in favor? And we are unanimous. All right, Mike is abstaining, so I've got a. Uh, all right, you're going to abstain then? <coughs> Tupper will abstain as well. If I need to, I will. You can. You, can. you actually can vote on the minutes and not be present if you read them? Yeah, I read them. Okay, all right, so. All right, so. All right, you'll vote on it. All right, we'll let Mikey all right. abstain. That's right. All right, so we have an abstention and one, two, three, six. Zero one, um, and one absent as well because we don't have Debney here. All right, next item on the agenda is public comments, and I believe we do have someone here to speak this evening. So if you will come forward, uh, typically public comments, um, state your name and your address. You typically have three minutes to speak. If you need a little longer, just let me know since you're the only one that's uh, speaking. We'll give you a little latitude. You're welcome. Good evening to the chairman of the board and the board members. My name is Shirley Brown. My address is 619 St. Paul Road, Dorchester, South Carolina. Thank you. And I was here a few, uh, several months ago, and what I, was, what I came for is that um, we have a small park in our rural, rural area, which is in the country, but we're enjoying uh, the Davis Bailey Park, but we have children and adults in our area that we go out to the little rural park and I spoke to you about uh, maybe having to try to get back under the county as we did before years ago. Mm -hmm. And also we need some items like park tables and some other playground equipment for the children. And okay. That's Talk about St. Paul's? Excuse me? What, which park? St. Paul's? St. Paul. Okay. St. Paul right. in Dorchester. What, what are some items that, that y'all are looking at that you need right now that are some things that you... If you're out there, it's like we, we could use some of these things. Well, right now we need some more park, you know, some um, tables, park tables, okay. tables for the park. And we would like to have um, a walking walk area, you know, just a walk. And okay. a few other items we need, like uh, for the facility that we have. We do have a little facility in the, in the park. Okay. Possession stand. All right. And staff, y'all got that? Noted as well. Thank you. Okay. Um, can we just get a um, meet up with Ms. Brown at some point, just sort of discuss some of that as well? What What is we used to have them in the plan, Austin, before you got here, and Brian before you got here. They were part of what the county took care of. We kind of went away from that for a while, but we always said we would come back and start doing some community park grants. Where are we with any of that? Not to put anybody on the spot, but and if you can't speak to it now, just we, we can talk about it later. Can, can you get up to speed in the list? Thank you. That would be great. Okay. Thank Does that help you, Ms. Brown? Yes, sir. Thank okay. Can, he, can Mr. Brown keep coming to our meetings? 
Yes, sir. Okay. All right, that'd be He's great. Him come. All right. I just want to make sure. I mean, don't don't hold him hostage. That's right. Thank you. All right. Um, our next uh, park status reports is. Um, Let's go over that, and I'm going to turn that over to Austin to go through each of the park updates for us, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, before, I, before I dive in, I do want to, um, we didn't get an opportunity to introduce Mr. Michael Sapp, our uh, Upper County Park Manager for Davis-Bailey and Texas Park. He, you know, he made the, the rookie mistake where he went to Somerville instead of St. George for the last meeting. So, oh, okay. I th all right. So, all right. don't worry. I've done that about ten years in and still made that mistake. I was walking over here tonight wondering if I was going to the right place. <laughs> it, it'll happen. Uh, we weren't hazing him. We didn't tell him the wrong place, and you know, we, maybe we should have as the first. And then Miss um, Dina Cohn is now our uh, Park and Recreation Department Office Manager. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome to both of y'all. Thanks for joining the team. And she'll be taking over Rigel's duties okay. as far as the Park and Rec Commission's concerned. Um, so we'll hop right into it. Um, it's been a busy uh, couple of months for us. Spring, it always is. Uh, Dorchester Paws, we had our community event in partnership with them. Um, they handed out a ton of food, supplies, toys. They had um, pet counseling. It's not where they counsel the pets, it's where folks that have pets that need some advice and need, um, need, need um, some advice on whether their pet should go to the vet or not or um, whatever, um, uh, as well as a number of other um, tents and agencies uh, in attendance. Um, Davis Bailey also hosted our, an e Easter egg hunt. We had a really neat program planned and then course the weather caused us to move it and so we were left with a problem that we had these thousands of eggs with candy in them and, and so we just um, invited the uh, the community to come out during spring break one day and we saw a turnout of about 40 or 50 people um, so it was unfortunate that it got rained out because we had a really fun um, slate of events planned and uh, We've been partnering with Woodland High School on many aspects. Here's a picture of um, a tour that the students took of the park and um, talked about employment opportunities, recreation, stuff available to them coming up with the Somerville YMCA. <clears throat> Team building day. Cavelli Enterprises came out, had a great time. Um, our partnerships with the summer of a YMCA are really, really picking up. Um, we had our first basketball practice out there last night. Um, there was about 15 kids out there <coughs> practicing. Um, so that's very exciting. That's very exciting for us. Um, the volleyball practice is tonight. Uh, the adult kickball, I mean, and softball, we didn't quite have um, quite the response, so we, we need to work on that. I'm going to probably challenge some Dorchester County staff, you know, maybe, maybe put the police versus the firemen or something and see if I can, you know, get them all worked up. Maybe they'll start building some teams. And, and back, then – Back up one second. Yeah. You playing with a 16-inch softball? Mm-hmm. Yeah, those fields, those fields are tiny. We'd be rocking them out, man. That's a. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is is it? I mean, I, I've seen some of those before. Where I mean, does it get softer as you play with it? I mean, does it end up just turning into a sponge by the end of the day? <laughs> um, I mean, that, that is a big. That's a big ball. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be a whole lot of fun. I mean, we would just it would just be a home run derby if we didn't figure out a way to you know. I think it's a pretty cool idea, though. I mean, it's not, that's obviously a much larger than regulation softball, so oh, it sure. certainly changes the game a little bit on those smaller fields, but it's still, yeah. if you're an adult that doesn't quite have the wheels that we used to have, <laughs> and you can only run this far, that actually is not a bad, bad way to play. I like that. Okay, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, and, and kickball, too, man. Kickball's a lot of fun. Kickball's a good way to blow out a knee for some of us these days. 
But no, I'm messing with y'all. So no, it's, are you get, are the league starting or are they not getting enough traction yet to kind of get going? What are you seeing? Uh, with the adult leagues, we just didn't get, you know, we really, we really hit the ground running um, with flyers. We hit it on flyers, social media. We went and talked to uh, local uh, churches and, um, and we just didn't get the, the push for the adults to come and sign up. Okay. Um, to be honest, one of the things that we, we, we heard was, you know, the price difference between member and non-member. There's not a lot of YMCA members up there. So Joe and I have already talked about that. Um, and because the, the member price is very affordable, but you get to the non-member price and it does kind of might price some people out. So we, we've started talking about that to see if there's anything we can do to, you know, because that's, that's their standard pricing is a member and non-member price. Um, yeah, I doubt there's hardly any members up there. Yeah. The ones you get about the swamp. Okay. And the goal is to, is to, is to get, um, obviously, people playing sports, but, but also get people um, to, to um, involved in the YMCA just in general. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of, of, of teams that are playing in Somerville and, in the Somerville area that are will that are that want to and are willing to drive up there to to make a full league. So, if I'm remembering correctly, I've seen this before. These 16-inch ball leagues, they don't necessarily wear gloves. I mean, I'm seeing the picture down here, and this guy doesn't have a glove on, and he's pitching. So, I mean, which is fine. Yeah. I, I, th I think it's actually a neat uh, a neat concept. So, I don't know anybody around here that plays that. That's good. That'd be we just need to kind of get people. Well, I mean, it, it's one of those things where I think that ball, it, it comes off that bad. It doesn't come off really hot. It, no. it, 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 you, yeah. You're not hitting BBs. Yeah. So, so it's, it's one of those things where it, really people can have a lot of fun with it. So yeah. let's keep on that. I like that idea. And we're starting this push early because we really want this to, um, we really want this to, to, to happen. Um, uh, flag football out um, out there and um, we're really hoping we can get a get a get a small um, get a young a young league out there going get a few games at least and I brought some flyers if you guys are interested yep. we can always provide more Will cost be an issue looking at that the, the difference between members and non-members <laughs> It's possible. Um, with this, they do get a cool reversible jersey, so so you don't you don't come out of it totally empty-handed. You know, the, I mean, but um, and I can't remember the details off the top of my head of how many practices and games, but you know, um, it's about six to eight weeks of practices and games. So if, if you kind of break it all up. But well, we're excited about all this stuff. It's taken us a long way to get here. We're not going to get it perfect on the first try. Right. So we're going to we're going to see what works, see what sticks, and then go on from there. You know. Um, another thing, we have pitch, hit, and run scheduled for June 18th up there. Multiple different um, age groups on that one as well. And it's um, official MLB program. You might. You, Mind going into that a little bit? What 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 are we doing here? I mean, pitch hit and running. What uh, I mean, but how, how's how's that competition work? Um, so I mean, it's the same competition they've always had. You know, you got your three K pitch hit and run categories. Um, we're gonna be, we're gonna work with the Y on that. Um, did you put in the, the home run derby too? I did. I did. Uh, next slide. Um, we're going to a junior home run derby the eleventh. Okay. With them. Yeah, so it's a it's a it's different age groups, right? You, obviously, and you pitch, and you compete, and then you hit. And you have a senior home run derby <laughs> for fifty and over. That's what the sixteen-inch softball is. But <laughs> <laughs> got to make it bigger for you guys. That's <laughs> probably true. Can we hit with a tennis racket? <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. So, so I, the the top the top age for this one is 14. I believe there's a 12 and 14 range. Um, so th those kids are probably going to be rocking it out of the park already. So, and then home run derby too. Um, excited about this one. The fun thing about this one is, um, 
you know, you can move on. You could, you know, as, as you move on, you can go to the next level and get to regionals, et cetera, et cetera. So we're really pushing these because we think that not only the high schools, Dorchester Academy, I think that there's a, a lot of, we can bring a lot of people out for that. And the goal is to get that concession stand up and running, get the full park in full tilt. Park's never been up on a full, up at full pace. And yep. we're gonna use these events to start getting it up. So uh, we had a glow in the dark Easter egg hunt. It was, um, we, we had opened it up to about 125 um, registrants. Um, just to to kind of ease in, right? If we opened it up just to the general public, we'd probably have <coughs> been overrun. So we we did it, we chose to do it registration style. Um, it says here 50. We had about of the 150 25 that signed up, we had probably about 75 show up. So we can certainly extend that registration a little bit more to, since we there's there's a drop off between registration and actually attending. And um, it was a lot of fun, man. Those kids had a great time. Um, it was, we had a minimum age because um, it was at night and we didn't want people to get trampled. But once we said go, those eggs were gone in um, a, a minute, if that. And uh, we, there were little Easter eggs with little glow, with glow sticks in them. So we spent a couple hours just opening eggs, cracking glow sticks, putting them in. Nice. They had a really good time. And then we had the partnership with the Somerville Orchestra beat Beethoven 5K on April 20th. Really cool, cool program. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure you guys know, trying to squeeze a 5K out of that park it isn't easy. You have to get pretty creative, but we made it happen. Um, 200 participants and well over 300 spectators. And so the, um, the orchestra was playing, um, playing all sorts of different types of music. And then the, um, the goal of it was that they'll play uh, Beethoven's fifth. I'm not much of a Beethoven guy, but, and they start it and you're, you're trying to beat it. You're trying to make it through the course by the time that the song was over. So that was pretty fun. And uh, we're continuing, Mutts for Miles is out there um, each Tuesday of the month. We have a lot of other things planned. Um, full moon yogas. We have a carnivorous plant workshop on um, June 3rd. Um, Photography, nature walks, all sorts of stuff coming up. So this is just what April, May looks like. We've um, been able to um, set, in a, set some s staff loose up, up at Rosebrock. We're really cleaning up the trails out there, uh, marking routes. Um, we're getting to, well, probably well past the point where we need to plan, and we are planning some just major trail renovations out there. It's getting used a lot, and you can tell the, the compaction is causing the roots to become issues. So we spray them so that people know that they're, they're there. Um, but at some point, we're going to have to be more aggressive, get some actual material on those paths. And we had um, <coughs> volunteer litter sweep uh, earlier this week, actually. And I was reached out to my Miss Grace Rosebrock. Um, she hadn't walked walked the park in a while, <clears throat> and I'm I've known Matt for many many years, and um, 
And so we went, we went, we, I went and took her out on the park to show her the progress. She was very happy with the progress, how clean it was. And, um, you know, when, I, when, when she wanted to come out and walk it, I said, okay, that's great, thinking that, you know, we'd make it you know, maybe a couple, you know, maybe 100 yards or something. That lady was, like, leaving me in the dust. She's, I don't know, props to her, but she, she walked pretty much the whole trail. So, reminiscing the whole time. It was pretty fun. Yeah. Not much update with Texas. How's the use out there? We're getting pretty good use with Texas. We are. Um, we get we get good weekend use. Um, Memorial Day is always a, a high use weekend for it. Um, it's it's mostly the local community out there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which, which kind of reminds me, Charles, I, I would like for us to schedule something. Let's go to St. Paul's. Yeah. I, I hadn't been out there in a couple of years. Let's see what Ms. Brown's talking about. I, I, we'll set something up to go out there and do some walking around. But Texas looks good compared to what it was a couple of years ago. It, it, it was in shambles, so we've kind of brought that back up. It looks good. Yeah. Yeah, the community takes great care of it out there. Um, we've the, the 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 gentleman that we were relying on to open and close it. I'm not sure if he's able to make that commitment anymore. So, staff has taken on the opening and closing of it during the week, Monday through Friday. Um, even though it's a little bit out of the way, we go out of our way to get out there and open it and close it. And then on the weekends, Miss Lula said that she would be able to find somebody to open and close it on the weekends. Okay. So we took a little bit of the burden off them at, um, on that aspect. Pine Traces, blazing forward. We had our pre-construction meeting last week and uh, they're marking trees and putting up silt fence and the whole nine. So we've re received some responses from the public regarding Swan Drive um, and the uh, estimate from FH Passion came in very high. So we're um, meeting with Gordian for them to review the costs. It seemed like it seemed like it was a couple of redundancies. It seemed like. It didn't need to be that high. Okay. So. Is Gordian doing your estimating? Um, yeah. Well, they, yes. Hey, Austin. Yes, sir. On the navigable waters permit review, how long do you think that should take? Or you even know? Um, I don't. You know, I don't think we know. I mean, I know. <coughs> I know. In this instance, um, it wasn't known that that permit was going to be required. Um, so it should probably was something that should have happened earlier in the process. But the. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I think it all depends. I mean, it could be like a year or five years or. In our in our case, it um, it was. I want to say four months, six months, four months, somewhere in there. If it's going through the core, it does take time. Yeah. It does take time on the beach. Yeah. We we suffer from the same thing every every time that we we try to do something. Yeah. You just got to keep on it. Any, any word yet? 
anywhere here so they don't forget about you. Right. No, finally get tired of you and say, man, will you look at this thing? Yeah. This guy's bugging me. Yeah. Bugging me. That's how we do it. And, until they're like, hey, look, you're next. Squeaky door. Yeah. So what? I said, Mike, no, you got a bug, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Take a stop. So Rose Rock Connector. Um, they're cur currently doing their actual survey of the site. And as you can see, we should have seen renderings and um, estimates. So we're still waiting on that. I think we're also hoping to maybe get some hard funding from the state delegation on that. I don't know if that's coming through or not. Do you get any word on that from Representative um, Murphy's office yet? I haven't heard much about that. But if they were working on that, trying to, uh, if they were to get some hard money or some stuff from the state, that would really help with the cost. And, and I think ACR now is looking instead, of, they're looking at doing a cantilever bridge and then going underneath the current bridge. Am I oh, understanding I that right? That. Yeah. They may be looking at a little bit something different. Okay. Apparently, I need to go to your meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and, and also, and I don't want to go back, but with Swan Drive, we're, we're researching other, other funding. I mean, there's the Recreational Trail Grant, um, and since Swan Drive is actually on the Ashley River Blue Trail, I contacted the grant coordinator, and he said that that grant would be something that they would evaluate. Okay. And it could be awarded if, if awarded. All right. Yep, so we're working with YMCA, still waiting on drawings for buildings on the site. Joe's not here. I was gonna, have they voted yet to swap that land over yet or no? Do you know? I don't know if it's official yet or not. <coughs> okay. Brian, do you know? I don't, I don't know. We had an update and it, I don't think it is. Okay. <coughs> Probably not. That's probably why I skipped class. That's hard. Edisto Lakes surveying is <clears throat> underway. What's the timeline on that? Edisto Lakes for like a concept. Hmm. Sometime. Uh, Sometime in June, uh, right? No. I would say probably. May? End of uh, July. Jeez, we are. <laughs> Just do you mind reviewing, because we got some new members, can you review some of the concepts that we're talking about out there just so that they can kind of have an idea? And this is out on Wire Road up on the Edisto River, guys, for, for y'all um, that are new. But yeah. some of the things we're talking about doing out there. Sure, and um, we'll make a note to... Um, kind of provide a, a more macro of, of all these projects since we do have so many new members. That's a really good point. Um, just to kind of give people an idea of what, where we're at on all of them. Um, the Edisto Lakes on Wire Road is 125 acre property that the county bought from the Audubon. It's part of a larger 460 acre property. Um, we sold, they sold the, the highlands to us so that we can develop it for um, possibly camping, outdoorsmen, activities, um, lots, of, lots of opportunities for kayaking. It's got a one mile um, frontage on the Edisto River, so that's exciting. And um, about six lakes, it's like a hundred, it's the whole property itself is over a hundred and something acres of just lakes itself. Um, and it's um it's a gorgeous piece of property if you ever get a chance to you know be happy to take you out there 
so it's super exciting. Um, I think I think I think camping in particular would be very popular on that site, on that piece of property in that area. Um, Let's do this. Let's schedule something to have a, a day out there that we can have everybody come out and let's just show people the property. Okay. I, I think that would be something else that, that folks that, uh, need to see. Texas and too, in St. Paul's just I, I, I agree. Let's just do a little tour. Well, get yeah. everybody out. Let's do, one, do it all once. Okay. We'll pick a day sometime in June. So, uh, mornings okay for the guys? Late afternoons? Smoking uh, hot outside. Before it gets hot? <clears throat> Does it matter? Is everybody kind of flexible to, yeah. to do something like that? Maybe let's do something, you know, nine o'clock in the morning. And why don't we set up those three parks? I, I like Mike's idea. And let's just get some, let everybody see these things. And that way we, we have a little bit more personal touch on it. When in June? Um, I don't know. Later June, second half of June sometime. Give everybody time to be able to work that out. Let's maybe put some, let's put some dates in front of everybody and maybe just try to pick a, pick okay. a date. We won't get 100%. Let's, we'll pick a date that the most people can come and, and right. try to make it happen. Okay. And you said Texas as well? Yeah, let's do Texas, yeah, St. Paul's, and Edison Lex. Okay. Let's, let's just do a little tour up there and, and, and hit all those. Look for an email from us. We'll um, we'll put some dates together. Okay. Maybe make it a Friday field trip for everybody. Okay. Some of the... Um, we got Pam as a ton of project or uh, programs coming up um, and um, as you guys may, may or may not know the Hurricane Expo is June 3rd we have a carnivorous plant um, bog workshop where you can build your own carnivorous bog plant out there on June 3rd in the morning Hurricane Expo starts at 10 o'clock from 10 to 1 um, we have a great amount of vendors out there we've heard a lot of um, good responses from the public. We think it's going to be the best one yet. We're raffling off a generator from Charleston Electric and um, music, food, fun. We're making it more of a, an event instead of just a hurricane expo. There's going to be things for kids to do, food to eat. Um, it's going to be a, good, a, a great event. We're excited about it. And then we have a nature walk as well on that same day over at Rosebrock. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. During, during this expo, do you allow food trucks to come out there as a vendor? We do. We, we bring them out. Okay. Yeah, we invite them out. There's a process for the food truck guys to apply to do whatever, right? I mean, yeah. There, there's yep. a system for that. Like, if you're thinking that you know somebody that has a food truck or whatever. No, no, no. I was just, I was wondering how, how the park was set up for food trucks. Is there a designated area? Do they have power? Or do they have, do, do people bring out generators? For the most part, people bring out generators. Yeah. Um, in, the, in, the, in the space that we're having it now, there is no current power. Okay. Yeah. I was just thinking about yeah. how, how the park was set up for yeah. this. Uh, vendors like that yeah yeah we, I mean you know we we find we find places to put them mm -hmm. and um, obviously you know we schedule them so that they don't conflict with each other food trucks are territorial so mm -hmm. you don't have like 15 uh, 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 snow cones same type of food right yeah at the same time. yeah we would have every snow cone truck if, if we allowed them to, every snow cone truck in Somerville would come out to that splash pad. So quick updates. County Councils disbanded the Conservation Commission, for, formally created the Conservation and Greenbelt Advisory Commission. <coughs> it's disbanded, huh? We already introduced Dina. Unfortunately, we lost... A good one at Laquan Priest. He got a great opportunity up in Greenville, um, managing a couple of facilities, and, uh, and I was very sad to see him go, but I was very proud to see him go. He deserved an opportunity like that, and it just wasn't a place for in our department to put him, like, to be able to have that kind of responsibility quite yet. Maybe we can maybe we can attract him back one day. We're gonna have a new park to run next year. Yeah. Okay. I know. Yeah. All right. 
I hate to hear that he left. Yeah, he was great. Okay, good. Good for him. He was well, well aware Happy of my intention with that park. So. Uh, oh, okay. You don't, yeah. Uh, all right. And he's he's from Greenville. His family, he has oh, a lot of family up there, a lot of friends up there. He's That's kind of his home. Oh. All right, I, I get yeah. that. So we should be hiring an assistant manager any day now, or her start, we actually already have hired and she has accepted the position. Um, Stephanie Jackie, she's been in a, a park aide with us since almost the beginning, um, since we've opened. She's been there since we've had fold up chairs as furniture. Um, and she's um, been instrumental in the success of the Asher River Park and hard worker, very organized keep the staff in line out there. So we're excited to see her start. Right. Yeah. And then um, we've created a park operations specialist position for Ashley River Park. So instead of having an, an office manager out there, which was our initial um, chart organizationally, um, we wanted to provide an opportunity for um, entry level talent to be able to get into the park, uh, Dorchester County Park and Rec Department so that we can attract people, that we can um, mentor and they can come up in our culture. And then when new parks open, which there's plenty of opportunities down the pike for that to happen, not just Pine Trace, then we have them groomed and ready to move on and move, instead of constantly going out into the into the pool to find new new staff whenever we're looking for for um, management. Interviews are underway. Hopefully, we'll be um, offering the job very soon. Um, not in that, and I don't want to. Not not in the slideshow was I wanted to let you guys know, and we sent an email out to everybody so. Um, we were um, in five different categories for um, this year's Reader's Choice Awards. Um, we were finalists in Best Outdoor Activity, finalists in Best Place to Take Out of Towners, winner of the Best Use of Public Funds, winner of Best Dog Park, and winner of Biggest Improvement in Somerville. And that dinner slash party is disco themed. So dust, go to your attic, dust them, dust them out, and um, I got a spot of drawer. He wears it all the time. <laughs> I got some good and, stuff. And it's um, it's tomorrow at at the Somerville Country Club. So I send emails out, seeing if anybody's interested. If you haven't gotten back to me, please let me know. We'll see what we can do. I'm sure we can figure something out. But we hope you're there. I don't own anything disco, so if you got anything, let me borrow. Let me know. I missed it by a little bit. I got another suit from my granddaddy. It's got a it's nice. Out it's it's nice. Big old collar. Yeah. Dance fever. Baby blue. Bell bombs. Yeah, it's sweet. Polyester, baby. <laughs> it's nice. John Travolta. Angel flight <clears throat> I don't have one of those. Angel. Oh yeah. Big lapels. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, another thing, Davis Bailey dedication of the Memorial Monument is on Memorial Day, May 29th at 10 a.m. as well. And did, you said you wanted, did you have any updates on the yeah, green belt? Is the next thing green belt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, as Austin mentioned last month, County Council approved a new uh, citizen advisory uh, committee commission, the uh, Conservation and Green Belt Advisory Commission. Um, council's in the process of uh, making recommendations to staff that up as a seven member um, commission that will be meeting. Uh, right now we're believing it's gonna be on a monthly basis. Um, and they'll be making recommendations um, to the county council on purchasing um, property, public pro uh, property for public use under the Greenbelt uh, program. <clears throat> One of the first steps in the process, we have an RFP that was put out several weeks ago um, to bring in a planning consultant to help um, the staff and the commission and the commissioners um, or the council put together a uh, master plan for the Greenbelt program. So Friday, the RFP closed. We had five responses. 
and um, the selection, or the I guess the evaluation committee um, received everything the other day. They're going through the process of uh, reviewing those proposals and ranking them. Um, those responses are due Monday, June 5th at the close of business. And depending on um, how that all shakes out, if there's a, a, a front runner, a clear front runner, um, I believe we're not, probably not gonna need to bring, yeah, we're not gonna shortlist. We'll make a recommendation uh, to county council on who that's gonna be, and that could possibly be announced that night at the county council meeting. If there um, is a close, <coughs> In the selection process, we'll probably have to bring in <coughs> um, the top two or three can, uh, firms and interview them. Um, but the intent is to get a recommendation before council so we can uh, authorize the hiring and then um, get that group to call along with the Greenbelt Advisory Commission, have a first meeting before the end of the month, before the end of June. So that's kind of where we're going with our time frame right now. So I think we still have two two positions we gotta fill yet on that commission. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah, I've got questions for y'all offline about that. Okay. RFP. Yeah, I wanna just update some guy, everybody on, on some stuff too, just from a standpoint of some stuff you may have seen in the news or just county council. Um, We've been talking about a lot of stuff, and one of the issues you may have seen in the news is the potential redevelopment of this particular site here. It's 500 North Main. Um, and then we've also got uh, another piece of news that's been out there, the TIF district, and doing some things uh, within the TIF district, which is basically it's just the Midtown TIF, which is a lot of Somerville. And some fancy local government financing, long story short, there's some capital projects within that TIF district. Well, we did a joint workshop. The Dorchester County Council, town of Somerville County Council did a joint workshop sometime, what, March-ish, something like that. Um, at the end of that workshop, we were just going through some stuff and, and I had mentioned um, potentially doing some, some swapping where we have transportation funds to help build Maple Street and there was some funding there that we could reallocate now that we had transportation funding and reallocate towards something recreational like a recreation center. Um, it's been in the news called a, a regional sports complex. At the end of the day, really what we're looking at doing, I mean, uh, and we might have even said regional at the beginning, I don't even remember, but my primary focus would talk about this is this community needs more indoor gymnasium space, desperately. Um, and our kids and our young people and, and even our seniors, we, there's an opportunity to do some things here. So that is, a, that is something we're working on. Um, the county may be doing much more of a lift on that than originally we were thinking. I mean, we were, we're going to be working with the town in some way, shape, or form. We do not know how that's going to look. But there's some things that people ask you about it. One of the things we're looking at now is, is by the redevelopment of this particular project, if everything worked out, we might have up to $20 million to build a recreation center. And that recreation center, North Charleston just built one. We went and looked at it last week, uh, Todd Friddle and I, 51,000 square feet first class facility, it's beautiful. Uh, they got three gymnasiums, pickleball courts inside, you know, I mean, and so depending on how we did the layout, we could do something very similar for this community. And we've got property that we own. Uh, so that is something that may start to come in front of this body, but it, it, you've probably seen it in the news, you've probably heard about it. So I wanna kind of just bring y'all up to speed. Um, we will be uh, working with the town and the school district because of the way the funding is down here and, and some of these mechanisms that we're using for funding, we've got to be able to work with them to make it a reality. But if it starts to come to this body, we'll probably start getting y'all more involved. Uh, but you know, kind of the, the thought process is originally is like if we build a large gymnasium, just imagine if you guys, uh, I've been gymnastics with my kids, and but if you go to some of these places like Myrtle Beach, we, we took Terry up there. They've got a huge one that's 100,000 square feet. We don't necessarily have to build something that big but what they do is you've got eight full-size basketball courts that you've got screens that can come up and down and have 16 volleyball courts or you can have four pickleball courts indoor soccer gymnastics and three basketball courts at the same time for your community and your kids or a wrestling tournament or a dance or a cheer competition you name it 
there's a lot of our families that are going and doing those things. This is something we want to be able to do here and not have to go to Mount Pleasant or, or whatever. So that's something that we're working on. Um, and the primary objective, regardless of what you may see in the news, primary objective is going to be taking care of our citizens first, something for our people. Like for instance, if we built something like that, if you imagine a big, huge building with six basketball courts laid out and then an elevated indoor walking track above so that you know seniors could come and just walk around the track while kids are in there playing sports or whatever they're doing, we wanna take care of our community first. Now, that being said, you build that type of facility, it certainly would attract some weekend revenue where people do sports tournaments and you got people coming into our town using the facility, paying money. But primarily we wanna build this for our kids, our families, our seniors and then it would be something that would generate revenue but if you got questions about that just let me know it seemed to kind of blow up into a weird issue and went sideways it shouldn't have but at the end of the day i think we're going to be able to pull it off it's going to be a lot of work but it'll be very exciting it's not necessarily been in our wheelhouse for what we've talked about doing before as county parks but i'm not sure if the town's going to be really ready to run it and if they're not maybe we are um, so just FYI on that. So get ready, big guy. Yeah. All right. Okay, yes. Question. Sure. So how many like multi-purpose rooms besides gym floors and open space and walkways? Like multi-purpose areas that could possibly bring in karate instructor. Sure. Or wrestling or or whatever you might have. It's a great question. Nothing's in nothing's in stone. Mm -hmm. Right now it's conceptual. Right now it's, here, here's what's gonna happen, at least my vote, mm -hmm. personally. I won't vote for anything less than 50,000 square feet. And, and not that that's a number, but what I know is that number gets us locker rooms, eating for, and, and six basketball courts. Six basketball courts opens up, like you can put the screens down, two basketball courts, a karate match, a gymnastics match, and two pickleball, or three pickleball courts going at the same time. So that also, <clears throat> Clemson University has a study that was provided to me. I've got it in an email, I'll, I'll send it to you all soon. But Amy and some of the, the, the town of Summer will talk to the guy at Clemson, their, their expert analysis. You should have a community, or, or communities typically will have a recreation center that is no less than two, quote, basketball courts or three to do whatever for every 54,000 people. Well, we've got 170,000 people just that live down here below the swamp. So you can conceivably say, all right, right there, there there's the six if you, if you did something like that. And then that, so that's just kind of the baseline. But again, nothing's in stone. This is, but that's probably where we'll start. Um, Myrtle Beach's facility, they, they have a facility they run very differently. And, and obviously we don't want to be Myrtle Beach. So people have tried to twist that. We don't want to be Myrtle Beach. No, we don't. Their facility is specifically driven for profit to drive sports tourism. They want people to come to Myrtle Beach, stay in their hotels and eat in their restaurants. That's what it's built for. We went up there just because Terry Jenkins on town council, he'd never seen one of these buildings. I'm like, let's just go up there. I just want you to see what we're talking about. It doesn't have to be that big. For, like for travel ball. Yes. Stuff. And you would get some of that here. There's no doubt if we build the right facility, we'd get some of that here, which would be good for our businesses. But at the end of the day, I'm much more interested in our kids or us being able to use it, especially during the week. But if we got some, from some tournament facility, that's great. So I would say the baseline is gonna be in that six basketball court, but it's going to be fluid. Mm -hmm. And we may end up bringing it to this body to discuss more. Um, but I know that it's been out there in the news and you guys may have had questions about it. I don't know that it will come here. It may be that we set it up and somehow the town takes it over and runs it and it's more into there. It will still be helping from the county side, but I wanted to kind of just bring y'all up to speed with what we've been talking about. But that's a great question. Any other questions about that? I think that's the big one from a um, parks and rec standpoint. I mean, I've always said I didn't want us getting into the active recreation game because I feel like that's a municipal function. North Charleston does a phenomenal job with their, with their active recreation. Hanahan does a great job. Somerville does a lot at Gahagan. This would be a little bit bigger lift. I'm not sure that they want to quite take it on. We'll see. Um, but we certainly have to work with them because they want to see it happen. I can tell you the leadership wants to see it happen. It's just trying to make everything make sense. And we may end up being a better entity to, to do it. And that's all I got on that. Anybody else got anything about and stuff? 
All right. Exciting. Lots of really cool, exciting stuff, exciting man. Stuff. I mean, like game-changing stuff. Yeah. Lots happened in the last few years that you finally get able to move forward. Yep. And I thought about this earlier. I do want to say kudos. Staff, y'all are doing a great job at both parks, but particularly I personally hear a lot of feedback on Ashley River Park. That's being in my district, and I just run into people at the grocery store or wherever. Great feedback. Staff's doing a great job out there. Um, I really look forward. I, I love what I see you guys doing up at Davis Bailey. When that hook finally sets, that's going to really take off. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to get people to understand what's going on. Yep. I, I love those ideas. That's that's awesome. There's a lot of stuff in there too. That's yeah. Good. good stuff. It takes a while to get those things up and going. It does. Get the word out. Jay, I have one thing. What, sure, Jeff. What are, what's the county doing from a like a from a trails and bike paths? connecting all of our neighborhoods. And I know we have Sawmill Branch, we've got mm -hmm. you know, Pine Trace, there's gonna be trail system around Pine Trace. Yep. But like, our county is so big and I, 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 I ride quite frequently, or at least I, I used to. Um, and to ride safely anywhere is not in like the Somerville area. Like we have to go up to Volvo we, I used to ride out by Summer's Corner, mm -hmm. um, ride the T, and that's like putting, now putting your life in your own hands as, as gross is. as going out that way. Oh, it's going to be a lot more, yeah. Um, you, know, you can't, you know, all of our neighborhoods are kind of disjointed. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, what are we doing to, you know, connect those and, you know, connect Somerville to St. George and, you know, through Richville? I mean, you've got, you know, Greenville's got the um, Swamp Rabbit Swamp Rabbit Trail yeah. that goes for what twenty miles, about twenty miles. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we have an opportunity to provide stuff that we do, and that's a great question. Can we add this onto the agenda to go over and update about trails, the trail work that we're doing? Some of that's public works because that transportation penny that we just passed, yep. we are doing some uh, improvements to the Eagle Chandler Creek Trail which is we're, we're paving that. Um, but we also have kind of a master trail plan okay. where Eagle Chandler Creek that goes through the bridges, it goes over Ladson Road, back behind, you know, uh, Tranquil Acres and over there at Ladson Road. Yep. And then we are going to continue Sawmill Branch down to Dorchester Road. We've got funding now to be able to do those projects, but we also want to start talking about connections. For instance, if we wanted to get over Dorchester Road at the sawmill and get into colonial dorchester park without having to go at grade crossing these are things we've talked about in the past y'all haven't been on the board some of you guys haven't been on there i would like for us to update that overall view where and where individual projects are because they're piecemeal <clears throat> just different funding mechanisms for different uh, trails on, on that the swamp rabbit trail used to be an old rail line and i'm sure you were i mean we don't really have an old rail line but yeah. what we do have are the maintenance shelves for the drainage canals and where you that's what we utilize to do some of those things so we will continue that and then the transportation penny itself when we do some of these new road projects we're going to take in to account uh, complete streets for a lot of those design processes you, some of the stuff's gonna be 5 15 20 years out whatever to yeah. see better mobility with that but that that is part of our overall plan. Some of it is in our wheelhouse here. Some of it's more transportation related, but mm -hmm. if we can at least get that trail master plan yeah. and let's kind of identify where things are, timeline, stuff like that, so we can go over that, it'd be great. Yeah. Because I okay. remember looking at it before, you had, we had a bunch of them and we weren't missing many connections right. to really tie a big system together. Uh, and we did, and back then we didn't have this new transportation plan right. to be able to actually do anything. Now we can start getting leveraged funds to do some stuff. So. I, maybe even start putting that as more of a update. It's funny we're talking about it because I just got a meeting request from Jason Carriher on that subject. Okay. For next Friday. Look, y'all talk about it, but I, I, if we don't do it every month, maybe every quarter, sure. an update on that trail system because you're not the only person asking that question, and you're probably getting asked that by other people to be able to respond to. That would be great to be able to give some real time information yep. on that. Anybody else? All right. So, yeah. All right. So um, we're going to schedule a meeting at some point to do a little tour of those three parks. Yep. Go out there and take a look at a couple of things. Um, for an email, email from us, uh, 
next couple of days. Are we going to try? If we did it on a Friday, <coughs> Duke's Barbecue works on Friday in Ridgeville for lunch after we're done. Just FYI, in case we yes, thought about good. that. Okay. Okay. Sweet. We'll add it on the trail. Well, I didn't say I was going back to work it, oh, Mr. Tupper. <laughs> after that. <laughs> All right. I need a motion. Motion. We got a motion to adjourn in a second. All in favor? Second. Aye. All right. Thank you. Great job, everybody.